Hey everybody, Daniel from Space Dock here. Now, I was supposed to be doing a video on hand phasers from Star Trek today, but I kind of got caught up with some other stuff and didn't have time to do the proper research, so I'll be moving that video to later in the week. But instead, I thought I'd fill this slot by talking about something that I've designed for a project called The Sojourn, which you might be familiar with if you've been following this channel, and how it relates to my opinions on space fighters, and how, while they are innately unrealistic, there are ways to design one in a more realistic way. Now, before I show you the fighter that I've designed, I'm going to talk briefly about some of the major inspirations for the design. Uh, the biggest one was the M5 Argon Discoverer from X2 The Threat. That's a German space simulator game from a, a while back. Any of you who are familiar with the X series will know that they had a number of visual reboots for the Argon ships. One after X Beyond the Frontier, and then another one after X2, until eventually they settled on a design in X3 Reunion and Terran Conflict and such. Now, while they are the best games in the series, and the models are of the highest quality, I don't think the ships look as good as they did in X2. I think the Argon ships were at their best in X2 The Threat. And right now you can see the Argon Discoverer from that game. Now immediately, if you're minded towards realistic designs, you'll probably think that's a great idea to have a kind of levered frame like that. But when you actually play the game, you realize that the, sh the ship doesn't really take advantage of the way it looks like that. It, it flies basically like an X-Wing. It has both of its aft engines firing at the same time. It doesn't have any main fusion engines or anything like that on the front and those nacelles don't articulate at all. So in the end, it's it's a fast and effective fighter, but it is like fully in the, in the Star Wars realm of planes in space. So one of my initial hopes was to take that kind of shape and use it more wisely. Now, another example of the same kind of thing is the Drake Cutlass from Star Citizen. Now, this ship takes the very innovative and reasonable approach of using articulated thrusters as maneuvering controls, much like the Guinevere, the ship I designed. But the mistake it makes is that it doesn't have enough articulated thrusters to keep itself on the same vector when it turns, so for the couple of seconds it takes for the engines to readjust themselves, the ship is drifting, and the result is extremely sloppy controls, the ship just slides around like it's on ice all the time, anybody who's played the Alpha will know this, and you end up wishing that it just had conventional monopropellant RCS. So in the hopes of correcting some of the flaws I mentioned earlier, here is the S-36 Star Dancer. Now this ship won't be appearing in the pilot episode of the Sojourn, so I probably shouldn't have spent so much time working on it, but oh well, it's done now, I might as well talk about it. Now immediately you'll see the same kind of frame as the Argon Discoverer, but this one actually takes advantage of it properly. The bow and aft of each of those pods has a large torch drive on it. The aft ones are more powerful, but they are both full-size sublight drive units, not RCS thrusters. Now, the obvious advantage of this is that you can turn this thing like a tank. You can fire the left engine in one direction and the right engine in the opposite direction and just go into a deliberate flat spin, turn yourself around on the go. It works exactly like Caterpillar tracks on a tank, but a lot faster. Those two pods Pods also have uh, 45 degrees of movement on the vertical axis on uh, in both directions. I initially had them fully rotatable, but again, it occurred to me that this is basically the same problem as the Drake Cutlass. It would take too long to rotate them, too long to arrest momentum and bring them to bear. At the end, it's better to just have them rotate a little bit to create faster rolling motions, and then also have a couple of smaller RCS thrusters on the dorsal and ventral surfaces to help with those movements. The upshot of this is that this fighter would be able to rudder left and right faster than it would be able to bank or pitch which is a potentially plausible but very uncommon thing in science fiction. You'll notice if you play Elite Dangerous, all of your ships pull up and, and dive faster than they rudder left and right. Now, there's basically no reason why this should be the case. This is taken straight from uh, modern aerial combat. I guess the logic you could apply to it is that maybe you can fit more RCS thrusters on the, on the wider top and bottom holes, and that's why that happens. But really, it's just a gameplay mechanic to make it so you have to turn harder than other people. A fighter like the Star Dancer would absolutely be able to go flat left and right much faster than it would be able to pull up and dive. Now this makes it basically half as effective as the Star Fury from Babylon 5. The Star Fury could turn as hard left and right as it could up and down because of its X-shaped engine distribution, but that does make the engines quite exposed targets, and it also means that a lot of reactor equipment and technical gizmos and such have to be crammed up right against the pilot. And if you've seen Babylon 5, you'll remember there's an episode where a very, very slight glancing hit on a Star Fury causes a radiation leak which ultimately kills the pilot. Now, the Star Dancer here would be able to be far more safe and hardened and reliable. It would be more difficult to disable it 
with a glancing shot, but at the same time, it wouldn't be able to pitch up and down as fast as a Star Fury could. So that's the payoff. Another huge advantage here is that the ship's two light coil guns that make up its primary weapons are able to rotate fully through the vertical axis, independent of the engine pods. So you could flip them up behind them to keep firing at the ship that's chasing them while they're running away at full speed, or potentially you could flip one of them to fire at a target behind you whilst using the other one to fire at something else. You could aim them upwards or downwards to accommodate for the ship's limited pitching ability. The same kind of thing is seen on the A-Wing from Star Wars, although amazingly I don't think we've ever seen it like shown as a valuable feature on screen. Uh, A-Wings can do that, they can flip their guns around and fire off behind them, but we never saw that used in Rebels or anything like that, which is kind of a shame. I should say that when I say uh, limited pitching ability in regards to this ship, it would still be able to pitch better than almost every other spacecraft design I've seen in this scale, because normally they just have fixed rear engines, but the fact is it would be able to laterally spin around almost instantaneously, which it definitely wouldn't be able to do up and down. So rather, it can pitch slightly faster than normal, but it can rudder incredibly quickly. So this ship is clearly a lot smaller than the Guinevere, and I've only got one image to talk about, so I won't keep your attention for too long. But just to list off the rest of the things quickly, there's a socket at the back for rapid reloading and refueling and recharging, etc. You wouldn't be able to load or unload the pilot through there. It's just a way of plugging the ship into an external port on a capital ship or some such to quickly resupply it and then dump it back into the fight. I also imagine the uh, entire front section that's in blue here would be detachable as an escape unit. That's normally a better idea than an ejector seat. And I do envision that this fighter would be able to carry missiles and other such ordnance under the articulating pylons between the cockpit and each engine pod, although they would have to be placed specifically so as to not interfere with the mechanism and be inadvertently set off when the engines are rotating. So there you go, that is the S36 Star Dancer. Thank you all for checking that out. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you want to know more about the Sojourn, please go back and check out my Future of Space Docs episode, my original sci-fi ship video, and my Space Doc is looking for artists video. And stay tuned because proper explanations and full information will be made available in the coming months. So I'll see you all in the next video. And this is Daniel from Space Doc signing off. Thank you for watching Space Doc. Please remember to like, subscribe and share for more science fiction spacecraft summaries. If you enjoy the channel, why not consider pledging your support on Patreon? For just $1 a month, you'll be able to access the Space Doc schedule to see what's coming up.